Hey everybody, this is Kai Altera here with Kai Talks About, and in this video I'll be showing you guys how to hook up as well as program the HC12 wireless Arduino compatible device. So we're going to use this to send data from one point to another, but first we need to experiment to verify that this actually works correctly. So first thing you need to do when you have your HC12 is so make sure that you buy it with the pigtail antenna, which is just this section here that you see. Um, and then you need to make sure you buy these antennas. These uh, may or may not come with the um, pigtail as well, but I'll have a link in the description um, on, so I can show you guys what I actually bought. So what we're going to do is if you look on the back of this, um, of this unit, going from the bottom up, you should see VCC, then your ground, then your RX, then your TX, and then your set pin. The good thing that, um, the one thing that I like about these HC12s is that your RX, TX, and your set pins, you can actually uh, um, apply those pins to any microcontroller pins. So it, there is no set pins where you have to use these specific pins. As long as they are digital pins, that is all that matters, okay? So what we're going to do now is go into the wiring. You wanna get your wires and you wanna connect your VCC to the five volt pin of your microcontroller. You wanna do the same thing, similar thing with your ground. Then for your RX, TX, and set pin, you wanna connect those to pins two, three, and four, respectively. So connect this to pin two. Connect your RX to pin three. I'm sorry, your uh, TX, your TX to pin three. And then your set pin to pin four. Okay. And on this side, this is gonna be our receiver. This is gonna be our transmitter. So for our receiver now, what we're going to do is get your VCC and we're going to connect that to the five volts of the microcontroller. Your ground to ground. RX to pin, digital pin two. TX to digital pin three. Make sure it's a digital pin and not an analog pin or it will not work. And then connect your set pin to pin four. And then you wanna connect one pin, make sure it's the positive side of your buzzer. Connect the positive lead of your buzzer to digital pin five. And then the ground of your buzzer, connect that to your ground. All right, so the next step is to go ahead into the IDE and to edit from there. So here we are in the IDE. I have two separate Arduino programs open. Uh, the first one is named HC12 Sample TRX, which is uh, transmitter, and HC Sample Receive, which is RCV. So the biggest thing you need to worry about is your set pin. So on both of them, I have the set pin as uh, pin four. And on this one, I actually have it as a uh, define. And this one, I just has an int. It doesn't matter either or. Um, for uniformity, you should just put them both either as int or both as define. Uh, make sure you use the hashtag without a semicolon for using the define. And make sure you use the equal, then the pin, then a semicolon if you're using it uh, for int. Next big thing you need to focus on is here, your software serial, HC12. Um, it doesn't go receive, transmit. It goes transmit first then receive going from left to right. And I have them as being both um, going, um, being attached to the same pin. Next is your string read buffer equals this. This actually clears your buffer, which is why if you check here at the bottom, I have it as well, okay? So first you wanna go ahead and begin your serial and your HC12. You wanna set your pin mode, your digital write. So this is what happens. If you're trying to set command mode, um, you wanna have your set pin as being low then you always want to wait at least 100 milliseconds. Here I have hc12.write uh, 
and I have in parentheses AT plus default. So I'm gonna have attached um, to the uh, description of this video um, the link that tells you how all of these AT commands work for the HC12, okay? But you wanna make sure you have it low, then you wanna have it right, uh, whatever the command is, which in this case is default, and then it'll automatically switch the, AC, the HC12 into its default parameters and then you set it back high. Always make sure you have it high, because if it's not high, then it'll always be in command mode. So right now, it's in transparent mode with it being high on both the set pins. Okay, so here's the big thing though. I can keep talking to you about all of this, but here's the main point. Here you wanna have the HC12 write this. Um, this is the sample code. You don't have to have it, it's just what I have, because um, I was working with the uh, GPS, and I just wanted to do a test to see if all these characters would fit, which is a GPS coordinate. Um, then on your receiver, you want to say that if the read buffer equals the specific coordinates that you have in here, you want it to do something. Um, for the receiver, if it receives this, it's going to have in serial monitor uh, data received, and then it's gonna print these characters so that I know when it's getting processed. And then the HC12 will read the buffer. Then you have the buzzer high, since it equals uh, the specific coordinate that was sent by the transmitter then you delay by 100 milliseconds, then you turn it low, wait 100 milliseconds, and then it keeps going in that loop. Uh, the read buffer, it clears out, and then you delay for one second. And that's just to make sure that the buzzer isn't constantly going on and off um, very quickly because it gets extremely annoying. So um, I'm gonna copy and paste this, um, this entire code into the, um, as a pinned comment, so you guys can know the general format. Um, if you're doing this with a uh, LCD, like the i to c LCD, which I'll have linked up in the video, um, and as well as in the description, uh, that'll actually post um, all this information, such as the data received, um, specifically, into the LCD instead of the serial monitor. So wherever you see serial.println, you want to put LCD.print, I believe. So it's quite simple. Uh, let's go ahead and upload it. We already have everything plugged in and we have our ports defined already. So all we need to do is select upload on both. And now we're uploading on both of them and let's see if it works. Done uploading. Hey, it works. So let's go ahead and take the sticker off and there you go, it actually works. So there we go. That is everything that you need. Um, like I said, I had this as a pinned comment so that you know the basics of what needs to be here. Um, the main thing you wanna worry about is here where it talks about the read buffer and if the read buffer equals um, whatever you have in the transmitter, you wanna go ahead and have it do action A, B, C, or D. So we now have everything working and both Elegu microcontrollers are actually separated now, so they're not on one breadboard, they're on two separate ones. Um, the only reason I have them plugged into the computer is uh, for electricity delivery. So we now have it working. Uh, we can trigger different events using the code from the Arduino IDE so that when it receives a certain uh, text that it does an action based upon it. So now our next step is to go ahead and do a uh, test to see how far can this HC12 transceiver transmit data? So in order to complete this uh, range test, we need to make this entire thing mobile. So this is gonna be our transmitter here. Um, this is gonna be connected to my car via USB and our receiver, that is what needs to be mobile. So what we're gonna do is adjust this setup a little bit by having these huge antennas, which are about oh, a little bigger than my, for, <laughs> my forearm a little longer in my forearm, and we're gonna use this to connect the VCC, not the VCC, the transmitter and the receiver instead of these smaller, um, these smaller antennas. So we're also gonna need a small breadboard and we're gonna need an adapter. For a microcontroller, need some snips. These snips are going to be used to cut this um, E-tape project box that already have pre-drilled holes to put the antennas through, and just a piece of plexiglass that will will stick with tape to the back of this to keep everything inside of it. And we're also gonna need our power source, which will be our nine volt battery that already has um, the power connectors on it, as well as male DuPont connectors, okay? So first thing we wanna do, let's go ahead and get this buzzer in here. Buzzer's connected. 
and we're going to connect our HC12. Note that on this adapter, I actually have this little set here of um, uh, female headers, and that will be where I connect my negatives because I have a negative that needs to go from my buzzer to the Elegoo as well as from my HC12 to the Elegoo. Now what I just did was rotate it because the Elegoo had the USB connection pointing this way instead of this way. And I prefer that my Elegoo always has the USB connection pointing to the edge, the outside edge. Okay, so let's go ahead and wire things up. And we got it working, let's take this off. There we go, now we can definitely hear it. So now we've tested it, verify that it works. Disconnect it. Now let's go ahead and change out these antennas. Now, here, let's go ahead and remove this one. So we're not using a small one for this test. Since we wanna try and get maximum range, we're gonna put this huge baby on here. So what we're gonna do is get this entire assembly. We're gonna put her in there. Um, this pigtail antenna actually comes with uh, another uh, lock washer, a nut, and a normal washer, so we wanna make sure we take that off. So take everything off here. This washer as well. All right, now that we know that it fits, let's go ahead and stick it through. And now you can see this is it right here. And make sure that before you do all this, um, that you have the, uh, the power removed. Then we get our big antenna, put it in, screw that baby in there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and power it up by going ahead and connecting our negative first and then putting the positive in our VIN pin and it lights up just as it did before. Now we're gonna go ahead and set this baby in here. Get the piece of acrylic. We're gonna push it down so we can get everything to fit. And then from there, we're just gonna secure it. Here is your mobile HC12 unit, um, ghetto mobile HC12 unit, but it's just for testing purposes. Now we're gonna do the same thing here. Uh, there's nothing to secure it to because we're just gonna have this in the car. Make sure all the connections are tight on here. All right, cool. So now we're gonna have this plugged up and we're gonna go ahead and see what the range is. So here we are, uh, we have everything hooked up. We have the antenna here and ready to go. Here is our receiver, which is still on. Let's go ahead and plug this baby up. Plugged in. And there we go, we have action. So let's go ahead and do the range test. All right, so here's the HC12 receiver. Here's the vehicle. Let's go ahead walking. So, oh, cute little dog. Anyway. Stop. Hold on. Let's hold it up. Okay, now we're good. So we're gonna adjust this antenna. So that it faces up. But we're gonna have to hold it because it's a bit on the heavy side. All right. There we go. So now that we have it facing upward, it's good to go. Still got a signal. Wait, oh, there we go. So right here. So this is pretty far light. The signal source is way, way back there. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and head back to the signal source and let's go back to the studio. Alrighty guys, so we are back at the studio and the HC12 transmitter transmitted the signal in access of 1,400 feet. Um, so the best thing I would say is for you to get these large um, antennas. I'll actually have a link in the description of where I purchased them, which is, of course was via Amazon. 
So thank you guys for watching this video, I kind of answer how Kai talks about, and please like, share with your friends and other groups, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and leave a comment in the comment section below. And tell me what you thought about this project, uh, what other things would you like to see me talk about uh, with this video series, talking about the HC12, or just Arduino in general. So I hope you guys have a very blessed day and a very blessed weekend, and goodbye. One last thing guys, I actually have an Instagram account uh, also called Kite Talks About. If you want to see daily updates on my projects and their progress, uh, please follow me over there on Instagram as well as here on YouTube. Both of the names are Kite Talks About. So without further ado, see you guys later. Have a blessed weekend and a very blessed day. Goodbye.